Well, things are going all right here, uh, allowing for a lot of frustration and so on that goes with waiting. Waiting because that's all you can do is wait. You know, hard drive's on the way, and according to tracking information, it is supposed to get here on Friday the 6th of July, and I'm just kind of sitting around here cooling my heels until then. Uh, this is not something you do very easily, and it generates a lot of frustration. Uh, I have gotten a little bit of constructive stuff done. I was able to get the uh, desktop machine running today, albeit very, very slowly. It took about 15 or 20 minutes for it to boot up and get to the desktop, but once it did, I started copying things over off of the main drive onto my recording drive. Things like my Minecraft single player world, the Fallout save, my Skyrim save, the whole Skyrim install with all the mods in place. Similar thing with uh, the Fallout install. And a few other odds and ends like the Journey to the Far Lands world has been copied over. And yeah, it's a very slow process. Like for example, the Journey to the Far Lands world is about like over five and a half gigabytes, almost 5.7 gigabytes, 3,700 files, and it took the better part of two hours to copy those to copy that save made up of all those files from one drive to another. Yeah, beautiful. Anyway. The main thing there is that I have managed to save some things. There are some other smaller things that I was able to burn onto a flash drive. Uh, it's only an eight gigabyte flash drive, but it's better than nothing, you know? Uh, and so, hopefully, the majority of what I've got going on is gonna be preserved. And I have a reasonable hope that I should be able to, uh, in some way or another, get the system to boot up and use some kind of... There is the hard drive software and whatnot that can be used to clone the contents of OneDrive onto a new one. And uh, then just put the new one where the old one was and everything just starts up and runs right. just need to find something like that and then get it onto a DVD so that I can actually boot it up. Yeah, but don't worry about that later. Mostly what I've been doing is spending a lot of time reading because, uh, well, A, it's just a plain good book and B, by reading keeps me occupied and kills a bunch of time and so on without me just sitting here staring at the walls going stir crazy. And now the last time I mentioned that several people wanted to know what the book is I was reading. This book is actually four books bound in a single volume, hard copy, hard cover that is. And they are known collectively as the Four Lords of the Diamond written by Jack L. Chalker. It's a very interesting, very involved kind of story. Each book pretty much stands on its own, but all four of them together tell a very involved story. And it's very interesting, very good. Uh, it's, well, I could tell more about it, but uh, well, let's see. It's a science fiction thing set in a far off theoretical future somewhere where you have uh, an entity known as the Confederacy. This is human government, human worlds, in a conglomeration known as the Confederacy. 
that stretches out some 7,000 worlds or some kind of crazy thing like that, taking up over a third of the galaxy. Along the way somewhere, one of their exploration people found a very unusual star system. Unusual in that it had four worlds in it that could support human life. Four of them. An F-type star with four human habitable worlds around it. And so they send some people in to, you know, check it out and start doing some studies and setting up housekeeping and all that. And that's when they find out something strange is going on. As the people got down on that first planet and within a very short period of time, all the technology just kind of dissolves. Technology, metals, their shuttle, the ship that brought them down there, everything, it all just gone. And so on, because as it turns out, each of these four worlds contains some impossibly small sub-microscopic organism that it gets into everything. It gets into every molecule. It's that small. And somehow, like for example on this one planet, it doesn't like anything that wasn't supposed to be there. And so it breaks it down. And the strange thing about it is that it, it seems to operate in such a way that the human mind can, with training and so on and whatnot, under the right conditions, communicate with, well, sort of communicate with, but basically control these little organisms. And on that first planet, it means basically, effectively, a kind of magic exists. Well, sort of, kind of. It's not, but it might as well be. On the second planet, uh, another planet, the organisms work a little differently. Instead of uh, affecting mass around them and whatnot, they allow the people there to exchange bodies, the mind transfer, swapping bodies all the time. And that's kind of interesting and strange. On another world, on the third one, it's kind of a little bit like the first, only more and more effective in a lot of ways, where it does work very much like a form of magic. And you have sorcerers and apps and so on and whatnot, doing all kinds of stuff, and again, he who has the most power ends up in charge, you know. And on the fourth world, the organism is pretty much within individual life forms and enables shape-shifting in some interesting ways. But the whole thing is all tied up with a bunch of alien intrigue and all this kind of stuff. It's a very good series of books. If you get a chance to read it, definitely you want to. And I guarantee when you do, you will say that my description was woefully inadequate. I know it's woefully inadequate, but I don't feel like making a 30-minute video to talk about one set of novels. <laughs> yeah. But if you get a shot to check it out, Four Lords of the Diamond by Jack L. Chalker. Definitely worth a read. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I am out.